Hey, you got special company coming tonight, Shan? They're already here. Oh my gosh. Stick around, folks. We're going to show you how to treat that company right with some Red River Ranch prime rib. <music> You know, whether it's holiday time, special time, or you just want to treat somebody to something really special. What is that? Man, to me, it don't get no better than a good piece of prime rib, cooked right, foolproof method. Now, takes a little doing, takes a little time, but I guarantee you it is well worth it. We got about a six pound rib roast, standing rib roast, prime rib. It's just a ribeye. You can see the bone still in here. This is a pretty expensive cut of meat, I promise you. If you got a lot of folks coming over, just slice it really thin. If you got some folks coming over you don't like, don't slice it at all, because it does cost some money, but it is well worth it. First thing you want to do, if you're going to have this, say, for supper time tonight, I think is how Shan would say it, dinner time. That's the night meal. You want to take this roast out that morning. The thing that helps this morning, anything to get an even cook time throughout, is taking it out four hours ahead of time. Let it sit right there on the cabinet. Let it warm up. It's got to warm so we get an even cook throughout. Let's get ready to season this thing. And we're going to season it really good. So let's just set it right here on that cutting board. See how nice it stands up. Now, soften me a stick of butter. Let it out here at room temperature. Mix me and some of them folks that Shan really got me fond of. And that is them Herbie's. Fresh rosemary, fresh thyme, Four cloves of garlic, a little smoked paprika, some coarse sea salt, some coarse ground pepper, a little Red River Ranch. Whew, it is going to be good. Pretty good consistency. It's what I call nearly like really softened butter. So you're going to have to get your hands dirty now, but we're going to rub this rascal really good everywhere. We want to make sure that he's coated everywhere he's showing. Fat side everywhere. Now when you cook this in a roasting pan, gonna make sure that the it is the rib side down the bones don't forget to get these little ends in here so we're gonna gently pick him up put him right there like that you can see we done got it camouflaged up it looks a little different than what it is all them herbs and that butter, all that goodness is going to just set right in there. But right now, since this is such a big chunk of meat, I want you to take some of that coarse sea salt and go right back over the top of it. 500 degrees. That's hot. So how long do you cook that at 500 degrees? Well, it weighed six pounds, and we're going five minutes a pound. So that's 30 minutes at 500 then we're going to turn the oven off, plumb off, and we ain't going to touch it. We ain't going to look at it. We ain't going to do nothing. And when you pull it out of there, what's it going to be? Delicious prime rib medium rare. So it's preheated. It's time to go, folks. Let's do it. Okay, I know you're a watchdog. I want you to sit here and watch that and make sure nobody gets near it. Thirty minutes. Where does it say? Off. Now remember, you cannot open that door until two hours. We're going to check it. Then we're going to take a meat thermometer and we're going to see if it's about 120 to 125 because when we bring it out to let that thing rest before we cut it, the internal temperature on there as it sets is going to rise. So it's probably going to jump up another five to ten degrees which will still keep it in the medium rare range and it needs to be cut and served at that point. But do not open that door. I don't know what we're gonna do for the next two hours. Frank's done went to sleep. If you wanna pan over there and get it, Shen. Frank's done passed out on me. So he ain't no help. I ain't got nobody to talk to with him. So I'm gonna to talk to y'all about prime rib. What is prime rib? It is the premier roast to cook. It comes from the primal cut up there close to the front. The ribeye section, you're getting it all, the bone in, you're getting that great marbling, that great fat layer on the outside right there on the top. It's going to hold all that juice in. This is why you're paying that premium price for a piece of prime rib, because it's got the marbling, it's got the fat, it's got the juiciness. So let's go to the 
grocery store, the butcher shop, the meat shop. Let's get a prime rib. Now I'm gonna pick out certified Angus beef. That is what I use. When you're getting a piece of prime rib, a lot of times they're not gonna be just sitting out there for you to see. So ask that butcher behind that counter. He's there to help you. Say, sir, I would like a prime rib or a standing rib roast. Tell him about how many people you're expecting to feed. Feed, is feed a word? Tell him how many people you're expecting that you're gonna have for company or you wanting to feed. This six pound roast will probably feed about seven to eight people. I'm gonna bring it out there, let you look at it. Look for that marbling in that red piece of meat. That's what we're after. Little snow white flakes of marbling throughout that prime rib. That's what's gonna make it tender. That's what's gonna make it juicy. Look for that. The more small little white flakes you see in that meat, the more flavor you're gonna have, the more tender it's gonna be. But what else is it gonna do? The more it's gonna cost. But you get what you pay for, folks. So start out with the best. It just gets better after that. Ain't that pretty? It looks like a pretty good piece of meat to me, so we're gonna check this rascal. Do not hit a bone. We go into the center of the meat, which is there. 121, 22, 123 is exactly where it is. So it's gonna warm up as it sits here a minute. So we're gonna let this rascal sit just a little bit. And then we're gonna put it on a board and we're gonna slice it. I mean, the big's gonna eat. I checked it again. We have risen in temperature to that 129.5 degrees. So letting it rest, done the trick. Let's transfer this rascal right over here to this cutting board. You can see there's bones sticking out here. Now, if you want, you can grab the shank of them right there. It's gonna tilt your knife just a little to hit the bone and then just follow that curvature around and it's gonna come right off there. Now you can do this either way you want. We can take the bone out or we can leave the bone in. Cut the cap end off this, the other end of this one. I always slice that end off there because I want to make sure that this thing is what I want it to be. Temperature will tell me that, but I love to see it. And you see when you let that set, we're not losing none of that juice that's just running out of there. Folks, we went ahead and deboned her. Check that outside edge. I always slice that cap off the end there because I want to see. I'm in a hurry. I want to know what's happening. It is right. Took her out against the grain. Now the grain of this meat is running long ways with this rib roast. And we're going to slice against the grain every trip. Slices like butter, it does. Got that good crust on top. The worst thing you could do to this piece of prime rib would to be what? Overcook it. I promise you. It is meant to eat rare or medium rare. The longer you cook this piece of meat, the drier it's going to become. Let it rest so all them juices are going to stay on the inside. There ain't nothing better to eat, folks. You see this here drippings that's left in here? You can take that, mix you a little cream with it, a little flour, make you some gravy. I think they call it au jus. I call it drippings. And I'll tell you, it is good. I'm going to dip mine back in there. Or you can also reduce this down with a little red wine, cook it and use it that way. But don't throw that out. I hope you learned something from this today because I sure did. The Beagle and Frank are starving. That's what I learn every time I come in the kitchen. But don't be afraid to get you some prime rib. It is the greatest holiday meal you can put out there. And this is a foolproof way you can cook it. But remember, start with a really good cut of meat. That's where you got to start. And don't open that oven door. I'll hit you if I see you open it early. So from our camp to yours, we hope you enjoy this. God bless you each and every one. Hit the subscribe button. Just remember, you cannot open that door until it's time on that oven. That is the most important thing. Whoa, brother, whoa. Didn't know it was fat big to jump that high.